Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Educational Grain Commodity Marketing School video series. This video series is being brought to you and sponsored by Decal Brand Seeds to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of their commodity marketing. Well, in this 11th video series, we're going to look at more closely at futures contracts. What is a futures contract? Contract specifications. Where do they trade? How do they trade? Uh, how can I trade if I wanted to trade a futures contract? We're going to look at financial obligations, margin, also known as margin, and then we're going to give some quick examples and do a quick summary. So let's start off with what is a futures contract? Well, you can see from the screen, got a bunch of guys with hands in the air and they're screaming. Well, futures trade on a commodity exchange known as the CME, Commodity Futures Exchange, like corn, beans, wheat. Uh, and then we got canola in Western Canada trades on the Impact Commodity Exchange, and in the background there you can see some of the quotes on the screen there. So, what is a futures contract? A commitment to make, this is the academic definition by the way, a commitment to make or accept delivery of standardized quantity and quality uh, of a product at a specified place and time at a specified price. So what does that mean? Well, this is essentially exactly like that fixed forward contract we explained in last week's video series. The only difference is that producer, in this case, is still open to the cash market basis. However, if he hedges properly, that futures position will actually protect his cash price if it starts to fall, still exposed to that basis. So let's look at some future contract specifications. This is an example of corn, um, which trades on that Chicago Mercantile Exchange, CME, also known as a CME. That's the abbreviated form. Uh, the quantity, uh, quality is US number two. Quantity is 5,000. Place of delivery, Chicago, Toledo, St. Louis. Time of delivery, there's uh, December, March, May, July, September. And price is negotiated by the parties to the contract. Let's look at an example with canola. In this example with canola, we've got uh, the quantity is canola, um, Canada number one, uh, quantity 20 tons. Just like in corn, it was 5,000 bushels. This is a, the trading unit is 20 tons. Place of delivery, 100 kilometers radius of Saskatoon. Um, there's the January, May, um, March, July, September, and November futures contracts. By the way, you, you've noticed with both corn and canola, um, there's not a futures contract for every trading month. So when you're delivering into uh, canola into, say, October, uh, you would use the nearby futures contract, which is November, to price that canola, plus or minus your basis. And then the uh, price is negotiated by the parties to this contract. So let's look at uh, how do futures contracts trade? What are the mechanics behind it? Um, futures are traded on exchanges, we just said, but it's traded by futures broker, also known as commodity trading brokers. The public, the farmer, has to open up a commodity trading account in order to trade futures. Um, there's two types. There's a hedger and a speculator. The farmer, who I'm speaking to now, is the hedger, um, but there's others like known as speculators. I could be one of those speculators that decides, hey, I think the price of canola may be going up in the future and I could go long or I could go buy a canola futures contract hoping that the price rises and make money on that. And I could do it today and buy it today and sell it by the end of the day. I can wait till tomorrow or I can give it a month to see what happens. So the markets are very, very liquid in most cases. So let's talk about those speculators because we're going to talk about hedgers in a later, later video series. If the speculator believes that the price will fall, then he can go short. Um, he initiates a position by obligating to deliver into the future. He goes short or he sells that position hoping that the price will fall. If the speculator believes that prices will rise, then they can initiate a position by obligating to accept delivery of, uh, at a future's price. Point. So if he thinks that the price is going to rise, he could buy or go along a futures contract. I hope you're staying with me. Let's talk about offsetting positions. So um, prior to delivery, a seller can buy back or offset that position. So in our example where that speculator is shorting, hoping the prices will fall, he can actually offset that position. That's a point in time, a later date, and he can actually make a profit and vice versa. Um, if the guy who went long obviously is going to lose money because he's going to buy, uh, he, he's going to uh, sell that long position at a later point in time and take a loss. 
Speculators are hoping to make money on daily swings in the market, and these days we have a lot of volatility. Futures is a zero-sum game. At the end of the day, there's credits and debits. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the Winnipeg Commodity Stock Exchange, um, they basically take uh, whoever's losing, they subtract money from that trading account, and they add it to the person who's winning. It's that simple. So let's go through a quick, simple example here with corn. In April, which is the month of April, um, we got December corn trading at 676. This is a real live example here of corn. And a speculator believes that by maybe uh, July, uh, prices may start to fall. So this speculator would take a short position, sell futures. The price falls by June 2nd. And so the uh, speculator profits from this position. So we went from 676 down to 5, a difference of 176, a profit of about $8,800 per contract. That's 176 times 5,000 times the number of contracts. In this case, it was 1, so it's 8,800. If it was two contracts, you multiply that 8,800 by 2. You can see how this can all of a sudden start to multiply pretty quickly. If instead the price had risen by June 2nd, let's go, let's say, uh, say we went from 676 to $8, that's a difference of $1.24 or a loss of about $6,200 uh, per contract. So your profits can get quite large, but your losses can also get quite large depending on your position. Let's look at an, a quick example, simple example with canola. In April, we think uh, canola is trading around 580. A metric ton, remember, corn is in bushels, canola is in per metric ton. Um, and within a quick order, say by April 28th, uh, canola goes from 580 to 600. Um, this speculator thought we were going to go up, so they're making 20 bucks per metric ton. So it's 20 times 20 times one contract gives you a $400 profit. But if the price drops by April 28th, He's gonna, he or she is gonna take a $400 loss. So, let's continue with uh, financial obligations and margin. What is this financial obligation or margin that we talk about? Initial margin, or it's a bond requirement, it's a small portion of the value of the contract that a speculator or hedger is required to put up uh, in order to take that position. Usually it's less than 5%. It's a good faith deposit. Its purpose is to guarantee financial performance. Both traders, the long and the short, the buy, the sell, the bullish, the bearish, by the way, did you know what bullish and bearish means? Bullish and bearish simply means that the bull horns point up, the bearish paws point down. Now you know. Anyways, back to margin. Uh, both the long and the short deposit a margin when the position is opened, but the trader who is losing has to add more to that account to maintain 100% of his paper losses. The, the other party does not until the price starts to drop again below that initial position. Let's look at an example with corn. So in our corn example earlier, a trader sells December corn at 676 a bushel with initial margin of US $1,500 per contract. 10 days later, the price rises 30 cents to 706. He's going to have to put, or she, an additional um, $1,500 is 30 cents times 5,000 times the number of contracts. In this case, if it was two, you'd have to put twice as much, $3,000. For the trader who was long, the original margin was also $1,500, but he doesn't or she doesn't have to put up additional $1,500 margin as long as the price doesn't fall below $6.76 per bushel. In our canola example from earlier, let's assume a trader sells November canola futures short at that $580 a metric ton with initial margin of $580 per contract. Ten days later, the price increases by $20. Uh, to 600 additional margin requirement is 400 per contract. So for the trader who was long, the original margin was 580 as well, but doesn't have to put additional margin up unless the price falls below 580. So in summary, uh, knowing the ins and outs of futures trading and how they operate is essential before opening up a commodity trading. Futures can be used uh, when your cash or physical market is not available. Remember, futures should only be used to hedge, not to speculate. We look forward to hedging with futures in a later video series. In our next video series, we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of using futures contracts versus four fixed contracts that we discussed in detail in our last video series. Thanks for joining us today, spending some time. We hope that uh, we provided some insight, uh, some understanding and light on futures contracts and how they operate. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.